So the Raptors tonight following up that nice win against the Chicago Bulls yesterday, unfortunately, really did not show up tonight, and they fall in double-digit fashion to the Chicago Bulls. Going to break it down for you, this painful one, in tonight's post-game show. So the Raptors this season have played in three of these back-to-back -back against the opponents where you play the same opponent twice in a row. Don't believe all of them were back-to-back -back nights. However, in all those games, the one against Miami, I don't believe, was back-to-back -back nights. Anyways, in those games, we've gone split for both of them. We beat the Bulls yesterday. They have no Zach Levine. They save him for tonight's game, and uh, he was fresh, and he played really well. Raptors didn't really have any answer for him as he dropped 30 points on efficient shooting. Raptors side of things, there's a lot, a lot, a lot that I very much did not like about this game. Offensively speaking, Fred Van Vliet was kind of hung out to dry. Gary Trent did have a good game offensively, but overall, even with Fred's really, really good night, a little bit in the third quarter, I felt like he wasn't moving the ball well enough, but considering the offense that was around him, and we'll touch on that in just a second, I can maybe understand why he got a little bit of tunnel vision. Raptors started this game really well. They got out to a 13-4 to lead. It was looking pretty good. Bulls won a little bit of running in the first, right when the bench checked in, and the bench, once again, is kind of the downfall for this Raptors team. Granted, the starters didn't look at that good either. Bench does them absolutely no favors. It's the same story for every single game. Let's look at the stats here. Coloco tonight got in a bunch of foul trouble. We really could have used him because the rebounding and rim protection was just awful. And the rebounding in particular, I'm going to probably go in and rant on in just a second. Five points for Coloco. Missed a lot of good shots. He is a rookie. We'll give him a pass. Wasn't that bad. OG, eh, four for 12. He did have three steals. He looked... Not quite at his best defensively, as we've seen. He looked fine. Not quite to the OG levels, but he's been really good recently. Scotty Barnes is the big one, and he looked just awful again today. It's happening too often here. He gets a 5-6-5 five, five stat line. He goes 2 for 9. Injury or not, and I'm, granted, he's the only guy in the positive for Raptors and plus minus. Injury or not, he's playing. He has to be better when he's consistently getting stumped on his drives by guys like Caruso and Dragic. And Caruso, not a bad defender, but Scotty has the huge size advantage against. That is definitely a, a slight worry. He looked bad tonight. We need him to be better. Like, especially with Siakam out, Scotty Barnes is the guy who needs to step up the most in those situations. Didn't do it. Fred was excellent once again. And you saw every time he, he went off the floor how bad this team looked. He had 27 points on nine for nine, 10 for 19 shooting, 6 for 10 from 3. Like, you can't ask for any better than that. Three rebounds, four assists, two steals, two blocks, only two turnovers. Not a lot of help. Gary Trent, 7 for 12, 2 for 4 from 3, 19 points. A bit of a bounce back game for him, but the bench just really didn't give, give us enough here. Achua, yeah, he had 10 points. He was, again, a disaster on defense. He was minus 16. Uh, that is the lowest on the Raptors for the night. Boucher did not look good tonight. Unusual. Wancho checked in and actually wasn't horrible, but his defense isn't really up to scratch for what we require. Otto didn't look good really either tonight. Just a lot of stuff didn't go well. Uh, we'll see where the biggest things went wrong. I mean, tough shooting night. That's coming from, yeah, you missed shots, but also you really, really struggled to move the ball, pass the ball around. That was apparent. You don't shoot the ball well from the line. But uh, one, I mean, the turnover, you forced 22. The biggest thing that I'm upset about is the rebounding. We are a very good rebounding team. In fact, one of the best rebounding teams in the league, especially on the offensive glass. They out-rebound the Raptors 49-31. to 31. Their big man is Nikola Vucevic, fine player, but he's not like a just devouring rim uh, devouring, rebounding big. Like, they, it's not his game. They out-rebound us 49-31. to 31. You chalk that up a little bit to, you know, they made more shots than us. They're naturally going to get more defensive rebounds, sure. But the Raptors were flat today. They did not play well. They came out. They, they were flat from halfway through the second quarter 
onwards other than like a one minute stretch at the end of the first half where we went on like a quick 10-0 run. The super flat performance, no energy, and they just looked bad everywhere. As bad as your team looks, as bad as your team may be playing, and you know, sometimes bad games happen. This is one of those games where it's a bad game, bad things happen. It's very frustrating to me. I'm trying to keep it cool here. No matter how bad you're playing, one thing that you always have control over is your effort, your willingness to play and to do things on the court. Very apparent to me that when you, when you get out-rebounded by 18 to the Chicago Bulls, that you showed a, a non-willingness to put effort out there on the court. The amount of just offensive rebounds where we do not box out and we let it go to a guy like Caruso or even freaking Goran Dragic, that is a distinct and utter lack of effort showcased there by the Raptors. Consistently, they beat us up in transition. You would think you're losing, like they're beating you up in transition because you're attacking the offensive glass. That wasn't the case. We only had five offensive rebounds in this one. At the very least, you can hustle. At the very least, you can rebound. This Raptors team wasn't doing that today. They absolutely deserve to lose. They absolutely deserve to lose by double digits. It's a back-to-back. I get it. It's also a back-to-back for the Chicago Bulls. It isn't for Zach Levine, and we don't have Pascal Siakam. You can play better. Like, I get it. You're going to lose games that maybe you normally wouldn't lose because you don't have Siakam. But, you know, maybe even if he is here, you still lose this game. The Chicago Bulls are a good team. But it was a very, very bad performance from a lot, a lot of players on this team. We'll go to what happened with the Bulls. Um, we keep the Rosen at bay. I mean, he's two for six with nine points. You can't defend that any better. Uh, Vucevic drops 15. Like, he had 13 rebounds. I mean, we were mostly content to give him shots. Zach Levine torches us. Dasunmu has way too many open threes. Their bench kills us. Dragic has another good game. Like, it, it's just so many things went wrong. But at the end of the day, you're always in control of the effort that you're going to go put in. And um, the Raptors just looked bad tonight. It is a bad game. Um, it reminds me a lot of that game against the Sixers where we lost by 22. They had no MB. But even that game, I thought we played better than, than this one here. This was just bad all over the board. It was ugly. It wasn't an enjoyable watch from a Raptors fan's perspective. And it doesn't really take much to you know enjoy watching basketball. This, this was painful to watch. It was a bad game. But... Bad games happen to good teams. We're a good team. This is a bad game. We're 6-5. and five. We're still above 500. We have now entered, supposedly, one of the easier parts of our schedule. I say easiest on paper because a lot of the, some of these teams that are supposed to be bad have been winning games, like the Indiana Pacers. So, sure, the Raptors should beat the Rockets. They should beat the Thunder. They should beat the Pacers. They should beat the Pistons. They should win the next four games. In reality, they probably aren't going to do that, but those four games are there for the taking. I know there's no Siakam, but this team is more than good enough to go and win the, win these four games. At least get three of them. It starts the next game against the, the what? The two and nine Rockets. Worry about it one game at a time, but if you come out like this and play like this against the Rockets, they're going to beat you as well. So fix up, work on the things that went wrong, Keep Christian Cloco out of goddamn foul trouble. And uh, there's no reason to panic over this one. It's a bad game. Bad games happen. We have good games. Those happen. You just want to have more, more good than bad. We're 6-5. and five, Not the worst. I mean, we're above 500. There's, you know, like the 3-7 and seven defending champions here who are in a lot worse of a situation than we are. Let's regroup. Let's rest up. We're on the road. We're back home, sorry, against the Houston Rockets. That's the easiest game you're going to get all year. That's the worst team in the NBA. Go take care of business there. This team is going to be fine. No need to really panic here. Not that chat has really panicked. So uh, we'll, we'll finish up. We'll finish up on that. 